the how can I say this? Um, to tell you the truth, it, it has it has it has um, improved a lot over Fable Two. I actually didn't really like Fable Two very much. I never understood why the hero never talked, and I felt I felt there was too many stupid missions where I'm like, "Hero, can you like back out of this?" You know, and especially when there was a, a mission or at least a quest that was obviously uh, evil, but yeah, again, you still get. It's not like an evil mission, but you know this is intended for evil, or like, you're helping an evil guy. I'm like, can you not see this happening? Can I just refuse this guy, or something, or make a choice? It's, I don't know, but... It's just stupid, but... In Fable 3, I feel it has improved quite a lot. Uh, but... I... F you know, the, the main character actually talked, and I'm like, amazing, because... I hate it when he, the main characters don't talk. I don't understand this. Okay, fine. They want you to feel like the hero, but this is not the hero I created. I didn't choose its ba I didn't choose his backstory, his or her backstory, and it wasn't a true hero I created. This was just a, a default character, which I felt should be a character of his own. And in Fable Three, it's done that. Even though the hero didn't do much talking, which I kind of like to hear a bit more talking and more the personality of the hero but I actually felt this had a lot better characters better voice actors than most games like Metroid and Fab and then and Final Fantasy 13 ha and combat but yeah combat was really simple but I felt it was more manageable than what it was the last time, especially the magic, I thought the magic was more improved. Where you, you combine two spells to create uh, a turn spell, like you could combine swords with flames, you get flame swords and such. Uh, I think my only uh, is there any other problems? I don't maybe the lack of weaponry a bit, and probably the lack of clothes because I like to customize my character. I like to customize characters to look. Stuff, you know, unique. <laughs> because, you know, I like to be f fashionable in a sort of way. But, I f the real disappointment was... I have two real dis disappointments with this game. It was... Sort of when it come coming near to the end of its own story. Well, not truly near to the end of the story, but... The whole revolution part. Actually, it's three parts I'm, I'm disappointed with. I felt there wasn't long enough, and I felt there wasn't enough scenarios. Like, what if they found your hideout and they chase after you? I'm like, why did that not happen? You know, I have wanted more scenarios. Um, I kind of... The, the story went in a different direction with an, a completely new enemy, which I felt it was wrong. If you played it, you know what I mean, and it felt really jarring to just suddenly, here's a new enemy, and, and, and here we are. I'm like, what? Okay. And, you know, this is the true evil force, not your brother. I'm like, okay. Uh, you know, you kind of ruined that for me because, you know, I'm part of a revolution here. And probably the last disappointing part is... is the fact that... The when you about to overthrow your brother, there wasn't a big battle. There was very few people on there, and it just didn't feel like a battle. It's just mm, disappointing, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but to you, I still enjoyed it, and I still prefer over Fable Two, and I found it many improvements. So make Fable Four, do something else with Fable Fable Four. Make the next. I mean. Make the next fable. Do something else with it. Come on. I mean, yeah, involve a hero, but do something else with it. We are keen. We were a hero, and then well, we were a hero in two games. We were, then we were a hero king. So this becomes something else. A hero what? Hero farmer? Um, a hero pirate? Actually, I kind of wish I give you more occupations to do that. Like, can you like not become a pirate or become something else? I don't know. I would like to kind of do that sort of thing. I kind of like to have ship battles in it or something. <laughs> it kind of feels like you should really have ship battles. It would be amazing if they include that. But anyway, enough of that. 
But my most disappointing game this year, and I do mean my most disappointed, has to be Splinter Cell Convection. Why? I'm a fan of Splinter Cell. Even though... Oh, the problem with Splinter Cell Conven Convection is, it's not Splinter Cell. This game feels too much of an action game, and to me, true stealth is the test of someone who doesn't have to result into kill killing someone to get past them, but the true skill of sneaking by them and not waste ammo. But yeah, again, that's one of the other things, but I'll get back to that in a minute. It's kind of like the games like Thief or possibly like Pilot Down behind enemy lines. If you, No one will remember that game because it's obscured, but that came out near the death of the Xbox and PlayStation 2. Well, not the PlayStation 2, but the Xbox at least. It's just... It doesn't really... It's just so... Okay, the best word is it's just too action-orientated. And, yeah, you know, people were saying, you're not very good at stealth. Well, I was trying to play it like Chaos Fury, which, that was the problem. I was trying to play it like Splinter Cell, and this is not Splinter Cell. It's, I know what they're trying to do, they're trying to make it go quicker, but stealth is not all about quickness. It's all about timing, and it's all about being patient. That's stealth. And it's, it's also to show one some um, skill to to sneak around an area without being detected. And also, I felt the game was linear. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, no, it's not. No, the stage you're in is not linear, but getting to one stage to the next is linear. There's no second or third choice to get to the sec to the next stage. That's the problem. Which I know in other stealth games, and even sp the other Splinter Cell games, you can go through other uh, events. Even Metal Gear Solid did this as well. So, I kind of find it odd. Well, I don't think Metal Gear Solid 4 did it. Don't know about that, but that's the problem. And why have I got unlimited ammo? I don't understand that. That's shit, really. You know, I don't. I hate the unlimited ammo sort of thing because you've got unlimited ammo, and the point of it, you're supposed to save your ammo. And shooting at lights is not a good idea. In in a logical sense, it's not a good idea to shoot at the lights because enemies will be drawn by it. Which, if it's only one enemy to be drawn by it, fine, knock him out. But yet again, if it's only one enemy, why not just you know pass him? You know, stealthily. I really don't understand that. Because, in, once again, in Chaos Fury, I never shoot the lights out. I usually pass them with skill. I only take out enemies if I have to. And... This game's just focused too much on the shooting aspect. It just feels like a game that wants to become Rambo, and that's it. It actually feels like the Born Identity. And... Really... It's not... It's not good, and it just has no substance either. I don't know why the night vision's gone. I don't know why a lot of the moves are gone, like the double split and uh, carrying bodies. Why is carrying bodies gone? You know, you could use a body to uh, make guards come towards them and myself a trap for them if you want. But yeah, again, I would just use the body to sneak past them. <laughs> you know, put the body down there, like go, go, get the body, and sneak past them and. There wasn't enough gadgets as well, but <laughs> but my biggest problem was I actually thought this game was going to be all about what's the word improvising because you are a man on the run. I thought you had to improvise your weapons and improvise your surroundings improvise what you need to use. I mean, this could have been amazing. I remember Double Agent was saying they were going to use something like this. In Double Agent, you had to improvise. Like, uh, in China, you had to use the fireworks to sound out the noise of your gun because they use less sophisticated weapons, like the AK and such, and that has no silencer. But all of a sudden, Double Agent had the normal gun, so I don't know what the hell happened there. That's why I just find this game disappointing. It was a waste opportunity, and the multiplayer is gone. I mean, the the mercenary versus spies. Why is that gone? 
I felt it was balanced out in Double Agent. And it made sense not to give the spy a gun. Because they got speed and agility. And if you know how to work each each of the character, you get past it, but I don't understand it. Oh, it's such a poor game. Also, the story wasn't... The story was stupid. I got lost in the story. And the whole conspiracy thing. Oh, Sam, did you know your daughter's alive? What the fuck? We saw his daughter got run over. In a CG cutscene. Or was that Sam's imagination? What? That's bullshit. Ser seriously, I hate that. I hate it when they take advantage of the sort of thing. Well, we didn't exactly see his daughter die. So we're going to say it's a conspiracy to lie and blah, blah, blah. And Lambert is gone. Why is Lambert dead? I saved him. And he's dead? <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway, that's my most disappointing game of 2010. <laughs>You know, I don't really think this has to be mentioned of the worst game of 2010. Tell you, I've only got three nominations, and you already know my number one worst game of 2010, and that's Final Fantasy XIII. So, we already know about this. If you read my logs, you already know I hate this game. You already know I why I find it the worst game of 2010, and actually probably one of the top worst RPGs ever created. Oh god. So I'm not going to get into that, but I will tell you other games I actually found to be terrible. Now, first thing I'm going to say this, I'm going to say uh, one of my other nominees was <laughs> Metroid Other M. Seriously, this is a terrible game, which some of my some of the people who would have watched my Let's Play would have known. But, okay, here is my reason why Metroid is terrible. No, Metroid M is terrible. It's... I will start with the gameplay first. Gameplay is... Gameplay... The gameplay is really boring. There's really not been much going on. Well, no, no, I don't really know much going on. What the hell am I talking about? The Sorry, I'll start again. It's... It's just not intriguing. The reason I love, the reason I play Metroid games, sometimes I don't complete them, but I play them to, or Metroid or styled games, I mean, as well, is so I can collect new items and collect new weapons and gain power. And in this, you don't. You just gain missiles because your fucking suit already has all the items you need. And why is it not activated straight away? Because of idiocy! Let's do the story, but I'll talk about the story later. It's... It just feels like a really shit version of Ninja Gaiden. That's what this game is. It doesn't feel like Metroid at all. And to tell you the truth, I was... I was actually... When I first saw the game, I thought, Oh, okay, so... Team Ninja's gonna do this game, and it kinda looks like... Uh, the older Metroid games, but yeah, again, it isn't. So it's in real 3D instead of like.